is today we're going to be talking about how to upgrade the uh, auxiliary intercooler pump on a, an X308 XJR. Um, basically, if you're planning on adding more boost, this is a necessary upgrade. Uh, make sure that the, uh, the cooling system can handle the additional load and temperatures. Um, oftentimes, if you're just adding some boost, this is just a good countermeasure to any um, overkill heat that it would generate. Um, if you're planning on adding a notable amount of boost, you may also have to upgrade the, uh, the actual intercooler itself behind the grill. However, um, the uh, pump is usually enough for most applications. So, not to freak you out, you do not have to go nearly this far. I just happen to be doing this during a more major uh, cooling system service. Been replacing most of the hoses and everything in the back, which if you're interested in, I have a whole video on as well. Um, I had a small coolant leak here down in the valley and I've replaced all these hoses and I'm also upgrading the supercharger and a few other things while I'm in there. But for you guys, if you're just doing the um, intercooler pump, uh, basically what you need to know is that it is down here on the passenger side, if you're in the, the US, um, uh, frame rail, and it's mounted with two bolts. Um, you can see right here and right here, um, and literally it's just two 10 mil bolts that come right out. There are two hoses, one in, one out, that you'll need to disconnect. And um, usually, if you leave the drains or the uh, cooling system um, sealed, other than removing those hoses, and are relatively quick, you can actually minimize how much coolant is lost as well when you remove them. Obviously, that was not relevant to me. I drained the entire system, but again, that is not a requirement. Um, I'm going to show you the pump itself, uh, but again, it mounts here uh, and hangs down off of this um, uh, frame rail. You'll realistically, to make it easy, want to remove the fans. Um, it is just two bolts here right at the top, uh, and then there's the two plugs, um, which you can just pull down on, and then the fans lift out. Um, that'll give you enough space to make this relatively easy. And then obviously you've got the intake tube that comes across here and the, um, the air box. Those come out very easily as well. Um, so uh, if you need more information on removing those, I do have some of that in the, um, the cooling system service video. Um, but they are pretty obvious, so I think you guys can handle that. Um, so let's go and take a look at the actual pump itself. All right, so we're here in the secret low-tech workshop. You'll have to excuse the mess because I'm working on several videos all at the same time. So this one may end up getting released a little bit ahead of some of the other stuff you see here, but um, I am doing my best to try and keep a relatively clean workspace so you can just focus on what we're working on today. Um, so the pump itself is this guy right here. Um, so this is, um, these are the two uh, mounting points that attach to the chassis. These are the bolts that come out. Like I said, these are eight mil. Um, pretty easy to get out, honestly. The nice thing is, as you can see, they use these isolators. And, um, you know, being a Jag, they're super sensitive about volume and vibration and all of that stuff. So the operation of this pump doesn't transfer any vibration into the chassis. Pretty cool little feature. Um, that being said, uh, so you remove those two, that makes the whole assembly come out, obviously after you remove the hoses, and disconnect the plug, which I should mention on mine was plugged under the frame rail. Uh, most likely yours will be too. Um, relatively easy to remove. So um, once you pull the whole assembly out, um, basically you're going to remove the pump itself from the mounting bracket. Uh, there's these two 10 mil nuts right here, which I've already pre-loosened just to make it easy so I can do this with one hand. Um, he says as he screws everything up. There we go. All right. And this bracket is actually looped around the pump. So you'll see here how it slightly curls inward. Um, so it will slide up and off the end of the pump and it just has a slight interference fit to it. So of course I'm do this with my feet. There we go. All right, so that's the pump itself. This thing is going in the trash uh, after we've proven the other one works. Now, I've heard some people online say you can bend this bracket and all of this jazz, but um, actually, let me not get ahead of myself. First of all, let me show you what we're going to be replacing this with. This is the new uh, Bosch pump that everyone upgrades to. This is uh, a uh, an AMG, um, well, I should say it's used on AMGs uh, in their cooling systems, um, Mercedes, that is, and um, has a much higher flow than this pump uh, and just does a much better job of circulating and cooling the um, uh, the 
coolant <laughs> that goes through the system for the um, uh, the intercoolers and heat exchangers and all of that. So that being said, uh, as you notice, it is a little bit of a beefier unit and especially in the diameter of the body here. So what I was starting to mention earlier with some people saying you can apparently bend this bracket um, to widen it up to go around this body. Um, I started looking at what it would take to do that because this is relatively thick steel and um, you know, I'm sure if you had some beefier tools than what I have, you could probably do that perfectly fine. And hey, if you can, more power to you. But I can't do that. So um, I have found a an alternate solution that is cost effective and just takes a little bit of you know work with some simple tools uh, and should work. Um, if you can't do my solution, I've actually seen someone use the metal plumber strap material before. If you're not all that worried about how it looks and you just want the function, uh, you know, it's literally the metal strip with a bunch of holes in it. That works, I guess, if, uh, if that's cool with you. I'm a little bit more particular than that. I want it to look relatively factory. So um, in the end, I bought these kind of like horseshoe shaped brackets that just need a little bit of modification. But um, that being said, uh, the mounting of this to the plate is one part of this whole process. The other is getting it to connect to the system. Because as you see, the factory pump has this little pigtail hardwired into it. The Bosch pump wants to receive a plug. It has a female connector on here that is conveniently marked positive and negative, which is nice. Um, but um, obviously it's not the same exact setup with the same exact plug. Now there's the super duper right way to do this, which is you can actually individually purchase the male connector, uh, the little rubber boot things and the pins themselves, which I think you literally have to buy five separate parts to make the plug to plug into this. Um, but if you do that, you can then literally cut this off, put that plug on the end of this, and you've made like a little pigtail harness that plugs into your factory drag harness, and at this end would plug into the Bosch pump, and voila, it looks superintended and it's super nice. And hey, you know what? Again, more power to you if you want to do that. Me, I'm going to take a little simpler route. I am simply going to cut this. Uh, I'm going to cut it back so I can expose the wires. I'm going to solder directly to these pins, which means I'm going to have to cut down the, uh, the plastic uh, surround here. Um, I'm going to, you know, waterproof and seal those connections just to make sure there's no issue there and just try and make it look as clean and professional as possible. So it looks like this Bosch pump had a factory pigtail coming out of it that plugs into the jack harness. So um, when we get to that phase of the video, I will tell you which wires to connect to which terminals. Um, but for the time being, I don't remember. So um, next step, I am going to focus on the bracketry, uh, the more physical side of things, uh, and make sure that we can get this thing mounted to this plate. And then we are going to move on to the electrical side of it. Uh, and after that, we'll get it reinstalled back in the car and uh, connect it back up with all the hoses. I should note, as I get carried away like I sometimes do, uh, this is the part number for the, uh, the Bosch pump. So it is the 0392. 022010. It's a 12 volt pump uh, made in Germany, uh, as I think the original one was. Um, and again, excellent part. So if you look this part number up, I think this cost me less than 120 bucks, um, which, you know, again, I am going to be putting this car through some serious boost. So uh, that's, you know, cheap insurance if you ask me. Um, and again, you can find it online. I'll try and link to where I bought this from. Honestly, I think it was Amazon. Uh, that had the best price at that time. So just shop around, see what you can find. But again, I paid a little less than 120 uh, to my door. So step one to this procedure is to grab the refreshing beverage of your choice and stick it in your low-tech koozie. A very important step to make sure that you maintain a level head at all times during this. And, um, you know, stay hydrated. It's very important. Hydrated. So, uh, but joking aside, um, I am now test fitting the uh, the clamp that I got. Um, this is a two inch, um, two hole strap. Uh, it's a U-shaped clamp, as you can see, normally used as like a conduit tie. Made sure I found one that was specifically designed for use in wet locations. Um, I'm hoping that this is some sort of like either a stainless or something like that that's at least treated to prevent rust. Um, I would hope that this doesn't uh, uh, corrode. I think it cost me just over two bucks for two of them. So who knows? It may not be the greatest thing, and I may have to redo this out of a slightly nicer material. So just look at the material you're working with when you buy it. See if you can find something that you trust not to corrode, again, if you care. Um, so test fitting it over the body here. Um, it is a snug fit, but does slide down with just a little bit of pressure. So what that leads me to believe is that this body 
is actually just slightly over two inches. Um, you know, which actually we may even be able to test. Hang on. Oh man. There we go. All right. Let's see what this thing says. So actually, yeah, ideally, if you can find one that conveniently is 2.32 inches, um, even two and a quarter would be better, but I did not find anything like that on the shelf, so two it is, um, and we're gonna just see if we can modify that to work with what we're working with. Um, so basically, my idea is to kind of get this clamp over the, uh, the pump here, kind of bend it just as needed to try and get it to sit properly, um, once it's bent, I may even have to slide it off the end because I may end up by bending it slightly underneath the pump almost. Um, and then after that is done, um, I'm going to have to uh, modify the location of these holes because as you can see, the mounting screws are further inboard than the, um, uh, the existing holes. So, and honestly, these holes are too, too big anyway, so we're going to do those of the right size. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of bending, a little bit of drilling, and a little bit of grinding, because as you can see as well, these tabs are too wide to fit on this plate. Um, so realistically, you're going to need um, at least some pliers, if not a bench vise to hold everything, um, a drill to drill the holes. I'm hopefully going to be using a drill press, um, which I have this little guy here, um, but I don't think that's 100% necessary. It just makes things a little easier to make sure this is held in place and the hole goes through nice and easy. Um, and then uh, probably an angle grinder uh, to cut this down. Um, I happen to have a belt sander, uh, but this won't be very necessary other than just to finish up the edges and stuff like that, which you can just do with some sandpaper. So um, that being said, I'm gonna get into this and uh, figure out how to bend it, and I'll walk you through what I did once I get it all sorted. <laughs> So here is the modified bracket. As you can see, it has a bit more of that omega shape to it now. So the tabs come inboard, then you have this radius, and then they come back out here. Um, the tabs are bent ever so slightly downward because I do believe this thing spreads just a little once it uh, wraps around the pump. Um, what I ended up doing, and this was the, the thing that made this a lot easier, um, the bench vise was the most helpful, um, and I, I missed showing you guys the very first parts, but I did show you one. Um, I used the bench vise to crush the corrugations at the, uh, the corner here. So basically I crushed it on this surface, and then I crushed it right here on this surface right where my finger is. Um, as those are the parts that need the most subtle modification, where this main arch here actually remains relatively unchanged. Um, so once I crushed those, I was able to use a combination of the bench vise and the pliers and just kind of leaning on it and twisting. Um, I was able to get most of that work done. And then right at the very end, um, to get this last little kick in, I just uh, pinched this piece in the bench vise. Um, as you saw, I bent it slightly over center here to get this little kick back. And then I used the pliers and I just kind of did a rotating motion here um, to basically create a bend right about here, like a little extra radius. So um, I have a good feeling that this is now going to get me to where these will kind of um, sit down low enough to get onto the, uh, the studs here, um, but I do still need to make the modifications, drill the holes, and cut the, um, uh, the end down so it actually fits. But um, I'm going to do some test fitting and mocking up and everything and see what needs to happen, and we will go from there. I'll catch you up as we go. <laughs> So what I just did, um, I snapped the, um, uh, the clamp onto the pump, um, aligned it roughly where it was going to sit on the body of the pump, um, I elevated the bracket just to make sure it could sit flat with the pump on it, um, and I then aligned the bracket with the, uh, the studs here. And as you see, the holes that I've marked actually sit inboard from the studs. 
But that's because, like I said, the bracket actually spreads slightly once it's on the pump. So it's important to do it that way, because if you mark them with that, how it sits in a resting position, then you put it on and it changes position, you put your holes in the wrong place. So with the bracket in situ, um, you saw me also leaning on it just to make sure any additional you know, spread and pull that might happen when those nuts get tightened down is kind of simulated there. Um, that basically uh, made sure that these tabs were sitting in the right place. I then marked them with a Sharpie. Um, I modified the mark ever so slightly just to make sure that it was relatively centered left to right in the bracket here. Um, and then basically um, I came through and did my uh, poor man's center punch with just a simple nail and a hammer just to give an ever so slight dimple um, in each one of these. Uh, I don't think it'll be too necessary because I am going to be using a, a drill press but that being said, um, you know, it doesn't hurt to have that as a little guide point. So um, next up, I'm going to see if I can get this thing uh, bolted or sorry, clamped into the, uh, the press and uh, see if I can make a clean hole. Uh, so I'm going to compare the stud uh, to an appropriate size drill bit with just a little bit of play because I'm guaranteeing you I'm not going to get it perfect. Um, and then uh, I will hopefully be able to zip a couple holes in this thing and, uh, and clamp this bad boy down. So let's see how this goes. So I've got the clamp set up in uh, this little um, vise on top of the, uh, the, the drill press. Um, a quarter inch drill bit looks like it's going to be best for me. Um, it's a little bit larger than the stud without going too crazy, so I have a little bit of uh, wiggle room there. Um, I've made sure that the vise um, is nice and aligned, um, so when I bring the drill bit down, I've made sure it's centered back and forth on the, um, uh, on the, the bracket here, and also when I look at it from this angle, it's lining up on the the, uh, the mark nicely. Um, so basically, uh, the nice thing about a drill press is you can mock everything up like this while it's not running, make sure it's all square, lined up, and everything, fire it up, and just start drilling carefully, um, you know, and theoretically, as long as you have everything clamped down properly, it doesn't move. Normally, you would bolt this, uh, this vise down, um, and actually, I may see if I can track down at least one bolt just to try and keep it in place. Um, however, this isn't crazy hardcore material, so I think as long as I'm gentle and keep a hand on it, it'll be okay. So um, I'm going to see if I can tra track a bolt down, uh, maybe put one right here, and uh, actually, I may even be able to get one at the back if I can find two. Then I can be certain that it's not moving anywhere, and I can literally just one hand the uh, um, the bench vise, in it, or sorry, the um, drill press, and it should be just fine. Uh, but honestly, you don't have to be as fancy as this. You could totally do it with just a regular, um, you know, power drill by hand. Just you know, obviously, be careful and go slow and steady. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna have to make another bracket, and all that bending was kind of a pain in the butt. So. Um, let me see if I can bolt this bad boy down and we'll do some uh, zap zapping. All right, so I did manage to find a couple little bolts to uh, attach that. I am still going to keep a hand on it just in case because they're a little short, so I don't know how firmly they're holding it. Um, but let's fire this thing up and uh, see if we can't drill a hole. Uh, also, if you want to be extra careful, you can totally pilot hold these with a smaller drill bit. Um, I'm just being impatient. <laughs> I've drilled both holes. Um, not as perfect as I had hoped, but um, as you can see, we're a little close to this hole on this side, where we have a little bit more material here on this side. Um, I'm still going to give it a shot anyway. I think this is still serviceable. Um, basically, the next step is going to be I'm going to cut with the angle grinder um, from this outer hole and just kind of um, taper these off just a little bit, nothing crazy, 
um, on either uh, either end just to narrow the whole bracket so that it fits on there. And then we're gonna give it a test run. And if I have an issue where this like splits or something while I'm trying to tighten it down, thankfully I always have a backup bracket, but I really, really hope I don't have to use this because this has taken me, you know, probably about a half an hour of, you know, farting around. But uh, that being said, uh, it is worth it to do it right. So that being, you know, hopefully you can kind of learn from my mistakes here if, uh, if this one does fail and watch out. Um, mostly this happened because the uh, the drill bit deflected a little bit as I put it down. Um, so it was actually just ever so slightly kicking over. And um, basically it just kind of pushed a little wide of the, uh, of the location I actually wanted it to drill. Um, and weirdly, I think this one may have deflected the opposite direction. So I think hopefully the spacing is still okay, but we're going to... Uh, I guess just see what we can do and you know uh, I think it should still work so fingers crossed I'm gonna get to uh, cutting with an angle grinder here and um, hopefully the uh, the answer is it all fits and it all works great so theoretically this is finished um, I've yet to test fit it but um, I just gave it a quick once over on the bench grinder just to round off any edges. Um, you know, it's probably a smart idea uh, to hit it at least with some sandpaper because uh, you'll end up getting some pointy bits from the machining that you're doing. Um, and that way, if you ever have to take this thing back off, you are less likely to cut yourself on something sharp, leaving yourself or a future owner a surprise for later. Um, so I'm going to see about test fitting this and uh, hopefully everything all works and lines up. And uh, I'll give you a look at that after the fact. So we have success. It managed to fit. Um, my holes were a little bit off, but close enough to where I was able to actually just get it with a slight adjustment to slide over. Um, basically, uh, the nuts threaded on real nice, and the uh, the depth of the clamp is perfect. It uh, leaves a little bit of room on the thread so you can draw it down. Uh, doesn't bottom out and still not hold it tight enough. As you can see, this assembly is all one piece. Um, I can't even rotate the pump or slide it up and down or anything, and uh, I feel as though I can go a little tighter on these as well, but um, I intend to put a little bit of um, uh, blue uh, Loctite on there when I do the final installation, uh, but for the time being I'm not doing that because I have to remove this, because we're now moving on to the wiring section. So um, I'm going to jump in by starting to show you guys the connector here. Um, so basically, it's just a standard plastic connector, and I'll try and get you a view, but there's two metal pins in there, and um, basically, the idea is we're going to have to carefully cut the uh, the plastic outer off of this without damaging those pins uh, to expose them so that we can solder to them. Um, that is, if you're not going the other route of making your own little pigtail thing, which I'm not going to show you how to do that because I don't have the patience, and I didn't want to spend like 40 bucks to make a little plug and wait for tiny little parts to ship in from Germany or whatever. So um, for me, I'm going to cut the plastic away, exposing the two pins. Uh, we're going to cut the old wire off as close to this uh, uh, old pump as possible, strip it back to expose the two wires. Uh, as you see here, we've got uh, brown with a black stripe. And uh, weirdly, it looks like black with a brown stripe because that's not confusing at all. Um, and as we uh, get to the soldering phase, I'm going to show you which one to solder onto which terminal, uh, like which one's positive, which one is negative. And uh, basically, once that is soldered and um, the heat shrink is applied, um, I'm going to take a look at maybe doing a little bit of extra waterproofing on there and everything. And uh, after that's done, it's ready to go back in the car. So first things first, we're going to harness or sorry, harvest this little um, wiring plug and uh, should be as simple as just snipping it off. And I'm going to leave as much length as possible. So I cut as close to that as possible. Um, and then you see we've got a lot of insulation there. So uh, stripping that back is going to take a little bit of time. Um, I'm just going to use a Stanley knife here and um, I'm going to start shallow just in case I do something goofy and cut into the um, uh, the shielding for the, uh, the wires that are inside of this. Um, but obviously my goal is to just go slow and steady and try and cut right between the two just so I can split them apart. That way I can solder them each individually. So. Um, I'm going to take a crack at that and we'll see what we come up with um, and hopefully I can expose enough to work with and uh, get to the reassembly phase. So 
that went relatively well. Um, this stuff is um, pretty thick and a little tricky to work with, but um, basically, again, if you're careful with the um, uh, the first cut that you make and make sure it goes right between the wires, uh, you can kind of start to peel it back and just watch as you go. Um, I did nick one um, right there ever so slightly, but the good news is that's right within the realm that I'm going to be stripping to to solder. Um, and I managed to, just with a little bit of water, there's just like this white powdery stuff on them, um, just a little bit of water freed it up enough to where I can see which one is which. So um, now I can compare um, and make sure I'm obviously putting the right wire to the right terminal. So I'm going to strip these real quick and we're going to move on to the soldering phase. I almost forgot a super important part. I got to cut this plastic piece off. I can't really get in there to solder with this in the way. So I'm going to cut it back uh, pretty much as close back as I possibly can. Normally I would bust out my handy dandy Dremel with a cutoff wheel and this would be super quick. Just go slow and steady. Make sure you don't accidentally cut the tabs off. Except my Dremel is currently on loan to a friend at the moment. So um, I am going to be using a hacksaw which should do the job because it's plastic. It's just going to be slow. I'm not going to make you guys watch me do this, but I'm going to work my way through this uh, plastic piece right here. And uh, then we will get on to the soldering phase. So that actually wasn't too bad with a hacksaw. It only took me about five minutes. Uh, just going slow and steady, um, making sure that right as I broke through, you know, I wasn't going to slip and nick these little prongs here. Um, so uh, this is the little bit that we cut off. Uh, obviously, that's gone in the garbage. Um, if you're worried that for some reason the unit that they're sending to you may not work or something like that and you want the ability to return it, you can definitely go the route of um, doing the, the actual plug because that will obviously salvage this. I definitely don't have the option to return this now that I've hacked the end off of it. Um, but that being said, uh, you do have a choice there. I'm relatively confident that being a new unit, this thing should be fine. So um, the wiring... Uh, it, I guess I was wrong. It's not a black and brown. It's a black and red wire. And then it's a brown and black wire. So I don't know if you can really see it there, but this is the black and red, if it will decide to focus. And then this is the brown and black, which is a little easier to see on this end. Um, so the uh, black and red is the positive and the brown and black is the negative, which again, thank you to Bosch for clearly labeling which one is which on these pins. Um, so it should be pretty straightforward. I'm basically going to um, just prep these with a little bit of heat shrink. Um, and then uh, basically I plan on individually heat shrinking them and then one larger heat shrink over the whole thing. And then after the fact, I have this little divot here. Um, obviously I couldn't cut all the way back. So I have a feeling that I might be able to actually pack some epoxy in there. And I think that'll do a pretty good job of sealing and kind of waterproofing anything. Um, I don't expect it to get too super duper wet, but you never know. So um, that being said, I'm going to get to some soldering here and hopefully have this thing zipped up pretty quick. That's the hard part done. The soldering is complete. Um, as you can see, I individually heat shrinked each of the two connections and then did one larger piece of heat shrink over the top just to cover any of the wires and honestly just to make it look a little more stock so it's all black. Um, sure, if you look close, you can kind of see the difference in the thickness of the wire and everything like that. But honestly, at a glance, especially in the mess of hoses and wires that is the XJR engine bay, I highly doubt anyone will even notice this thing. So. Um, I will be going back and just packing a little bit of sealant in there, whether that be like some black silicone um, or maybe, uh, you know, some sort of an epoxy or something like that. Do a little research and just see what I want to go with. Um, my main thing is I just want something that's not going to damage the heat shrink and, and possibly, you know, melt all of the, the goo in there. So I think silicone could be a good option. Um, but basically, I'm just going to pack some of that in there and this thing is ready for install. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, I will uh, show how to install this in the other video, uh, which is the XJR um, hose swap video where I go through and change almost all of the hoses in the entire engine bay. Um, we'll put a link to that in the description um, and that way you can see the reinstallation and also the removal of this component there as well if you need to. But this is the majority of the how-to and again uh, what I showed you earlier in this video of where it comes from and how to get it out, you're going to do the same thing in reverse get the hoses back on, get the fan assembly back in, 
get it all bolted back up, and theoretically, you should be off and running. So uh, let us know in the comments if um, if this helped you out. Uh, hopefully, uh, all of you guys that are looking to hot rod your XJR, or if your pump failed and you just wanted a better uh, better unit to put in there, um, you know, I think this is a great way to go, and uh, we would love to hear from you. So uh, also, if this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Um, it really does help us, and uh, you know we intend to continue making more content uh, that's Jag specific, but also on other cool automotive stuff as well. So um, we would love it if you'd uh, give us a subscribe, and um, also maybe hit that little bell button that way you know when we're going to be releasing a new video. It'll send you a little notification. So thanks again, and as always, uh, check in next time, and we look forward to seeing you there.